At this time, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. It's an ordinance established by the Lord Jesus on the night before he was crucified. It is a time for those who know and love him to remember his death and to proclaim his death until he comes back to the earth. The bread that we take represents his body and the juice we drink represents his blood. He died to take away our sins and to bring us into fellowship with himself. We will look at a passage of scripture to further our understanding of what actually took place and what his death has accomplished. Uh, I will ask you to turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 11. And if you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles here and just raise your hand and somebody will place one of these in your hand. They are yours to keep if you do not have one. Our meditation will be on mainly the last three verses of chapter 11 of Matthew. These verses are Jesus' invitation to those who are under heavy burdens to come to him for, to find rest. His words are a personal invitation to become his disciple. Pray with me as we prepare for communion. Our Heavenly Father, as we turn to your word, as we look, do enlighten our eyes to see things that will help us to love you more because of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd ask you to follow along as I read Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Just before Jesus spoke these words, he had pronounced woes on the cities where he had done miracles, and they still did not repent. Then he began praising his father that these, that he had hidden these things, that is the things that have to do with repentance and eternal life, from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. The things of God are not obtained or realized through human intellect, but rather by revelation from God. And the Father has handed all things over to his Son so that no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son wills to reveal him. God's sovereignty and salvation does not conflict with Jesus' call to come to him. His, he is sovereign over who realizes that they are burdened down and who realize that they, are, they need to come to Jesus. He calls us, he call, his call is to those who are growing weary and are in the state of having been burdened down. What is this weariness and burden which Jesus is addressing? It might help us to understand that the people in Jesus' day were living under religious leaders who were weighing people down with heavy burdens, which Jesus said were hard to bear. These were burdens of human, human tradition, which the leaders would not lift one finger to lighten. They were also living under the law of Moses, which Peter would later say was a yoke which neither they nor their fathers were able to bear. In fact, anyone who is trying to earn favor with God through their works or their good life are taking on an impossible task, which is a heavy burden. The crux of the matter is that we all bear a burden of sin, which we cannot remove. Only Christ can remove it. And it is to such as these that Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. So how does Jesus give rest to the weary? Well, first he takes away the burden of sin. When you come to him, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and you will find rest to your souls. Taking on Jesus' yoke implies that we are submitting ourselves to his authority. And learning of him means that we are becoming his disciple. 
depending on the type of master that one is under and one is being discipled by, it uh, could be a burden, it could be an additional burden, or it could be a delight. And Jesus immediately makes it clear that taking on his yoke and learning from him is a delight based on who he is, the kind of person he is. He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. It's amazing to think that the Lord of the whole universe is humble and gentle in heart. And these are qualities which Jesus seeks to produce in those that become his disciples. As Jesus said, a pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone who has been fully trained will be like his teacher. What an incentive to come to him, to take up his yoke and to learn of him. So how does taking up the yoke and learning of him give rest to the souls? Well, in taking up his yoke, we are submitting to one who is all-powerful. He works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. He has given us his spirit by whom we may put to death the deeds of the flesh. And in learning of him, we find that he has completed the work necessary to accomplish our standing before the Lord. That we are given a righteousness, a status that is not from ourselves, it's from Christ. In becoming his disciples, we learn that we enter into his rest by faith, and that having entered into that rest, we cease from our own works of trying to please God. Instead, our works are because he has accepted us and made us acceptable to his Father. And we continue to learn more and more of how needy we really were that would cost such a sacrifice on the part of the Son of God on the cross. Finally, Jesus explains that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His yoke is easy to bear, and that, that word has a connotation of being pleasant and kind. It is that way because of who Jesus is. And his burden is light as opposed to the heavy burden laid upon the people by the Pharisees. The Apostle Paul found that the burden of his sufferings for the service of Christ were light because they were momentary, they were only temporary, and they were incomparable to the eternal weight of glory that were his in Christ. Whatever the burden Christ lays upon us is light compared to the burden of the sin that we had been bearing. We read in John's first epistle that the love of God is to keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Christian, as you partake of the Lord's Supper, remember his, that his death has made it possible for you all that he has promised. When your heart is prepared, you may partake of the elements. If you're here today and you know that you have never really come to trust Christ alone for your salvation, we ask that you not partake in this ordinance. It's meant for those who are followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus meant this ordinance for those who are following him and to remember him in this way. We are glad that you're here, and we ask that you would speak with someone after the service. There will be somebody to your left front to speak with you if you would, would come to visit with them. So men, at this time, we ask you to come forward and serve us.